Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of the six spreadsheets you're going to be creating in this project. Now, it might seem like creating six of these spreadsheets is really a lot, but what we're going to do in this video is explain how to quickly get through them all and how they're all kind of tied together. So in this first spreadsheet, you're basically setting up a spreadsheet to solve a specific problem that we've done in class. And the idea is that um, you have a spreadsheet with an interest column. Remember, that's the amount of money you're making in interest. The principal, the starting balance that you have in the account. The rate, how fast does the interest grow, and the time. And you'll notice that I set up a time value here. And in this column, I put the units for time. So I said, this time is four, and the amount is years. So what, then I, what I would then do is make this a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to click over here, go to Format, and I'm going to do Alternating Colors. So you should set that up. There we go. So this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to zoom in. You should be at this step. You might want to pause the video, set up your columns, maybe even bold the first column. Just click over here on the 1 and hit Control or Command-B. And then I go to View Freeze. I'm going to freeze the first row. And now I can always see my first row. And set that up. Get your alternating colors going. And then press play when you're ready to continue. All right, so you have your columns. And the next thing to do is to format it. So I'm going to go to Interest. You know, I'll select Interest and Principal. Go to Format. And for Number here, make sure you're selected Currency. So that'll calculate to the nearest sent as you go through it. So why don't you do that for column A and B, select currency, and then press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so you've got your format here. For rate, you want percents, so go to format, number, and then I would select this percent because it's the nearest hundredth. So pause the video and do that, and then press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, so you selected percent, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that four years in there, and you have a very specific problem you're solving, but the idea is, let's say the principal is 2,000, let's just make it uh, 2,000, and the interest rate is 3.35%. So let's say you're solving for interest. What are you going to do? We're going to type equals, and then you're going to multiply B2 by C2 by D2, because interest, this is that's this cell right here where I'm typing the formula, is equal to what? Well, it's equal to P times R times T. So we're multiplying B2, which is the principal, times C2, which is the rate, times D2, which is the time, and there we go. Now let's say we had 268 for our interest, and we're trying to find the principal. Rearrange your formula. Remember that principal is equal to interest divided by rate by time. So you type equals interest, A2, divided by parentheses, C2, times d2 and that calculates the principal so there we go if we had the principal let's say we wanted to find the rate rate is equivalent to interest a2 divided by the product of b2 principal and time d2 there it is if we didn't have the rate we have to find the time and what would that be well time is equal to interest. Always on top we have our interest when we're solving for principal rate and time. And we're dividing by B2 times C2. And we hit enter. There we go. So um, you'll enter in the given values. And what I'm looking for is that for all the missing parts, you have a formula that is able to calculate what we've solved here. Now if you have variables, try it out. See if you can get it to work. If not, I'll take a look at it. Okay, so now we move on to the other one, two, three, four, five sheets you see down here. Now you'll be able to import exactly what you see here into your spreadsheet. All you have to do is click on this little arrow, go to copy to, and you can bring it into an existing spreadsheet, or if you haven't created one yet, a new spreadsheet. So why don't you take a moment and import interest, click this, copy to, bring into your spreadsheet. Then repeat the process of principal, rate, time, and finally the advanced spreadsheet. 
So go ahead and do that and then come back and press play and we'll start to break these things down. Okay, so why are there are five spreadsheets. Well, in the f in the this spreadsheet says interest. You're solving for the interest for principal. You're solving for principal. For rate, you're solving for rate. For time, you're solving for time. First in years, then months, then days. And you can see the answers here. But we're going to set the formulas up. And then for the advanced, uh, you're going to write a formula that can interpret whether the input is in years or months or days. You don't need to change anything. So first, let's deal with the interest. First of all, this is all out of whack, and by out of whack, I mean we want to sort it by years, so all the year entries first, then the month entries, and then the, the day entries. And usually, I think when people sort, they go to a column, they click over here, they do sort sheet A through Z, which works great, it's already sorted. But then when they go to the next column and try to repeat the process, it smooths things around. So there is a way to sort multiple columns at once, and here's how I do it. I click over here. So I select everything now, I go to data, and I want to sort my range. So data, sort range, selected everything, data, sort range. And I want to select the here that I have a header row. That's going to not sort out these headings here, leave it alone. And I want to sort by first time in years, then months, and finally days. And it's really cool here that it actually predicts that. So why don't you pause the video here, select everything, Go to data, sort range, and then pick these three things and make sure it's going from A through Z. Okay, so you've set this up, you've clicked sort, it should look something like this. Notice it sorts by years, then months, and then days. And by years, months, and days, I'm just literally taking the year entries first, then the month days, and finally the, the month entries, and then finally the day entries. And these are in fact the same, right? Four years right here is 48 months, is 1,460 days. It's, it's all really the same thing. I just want you to realize that, well, we can actually sort multiple columns. Now for interest, I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to do principal, B2, times rate, times year, years. And that's work. that works for these. But then when I get to months, I'm going to have to do equals principal times rate times what? Well, the months here, I want to put in parentheses, 48 divided by 12. Hit enter, and I'll get the same answer. You know it's correct if you get the same answer because these are set up. The principle is 1,000, 2, 4, 40, 80, 1, 2, 4, 40, 80, and even the percents match. The times look different, but it's really the same amount. Finally, we want to do equals principle, so that's B12 here, times rate times in parentheses, now it's going to be 1460 divided by 360. And I don't know if I entered 48, I'll go check in a moment, but notice I'm here I'm entering F12 and not 1460 because I want to be able to enter any amount of days in there. All right, ooh, and this, that's not 360, Sean, 365, boom. So this is based on 365, 365 days per year. And here, let me fix this one. I entered 48 over 12 but we want to get used to entering E7 because this should be able to handle any amount of months that we input. So I'm going to drag that down and now I'm all set. So the idea is I have a calculation of interest for years, then for months, and then finally for days. Now I'm going to repeat the process. Now I'm going to principal. These are missing. I do the same thing. Except the formula is moved around. Principal is just interest divided by rate times time. Enter. Drag it down. Then start over, interest divided by rate times. Well, this now, the time again, it's going to be, I'll put parentheses, E7 divided by 12, right? Drag that down. And finally, I'm going to do principal divided by rate times parentheses our days, whatever that is, divided by 365. And you can see that that works out. So again, we have our formula. We solve for principal now here for years, then months, and then finally days. Then we move to rate and repeat. Rate is just going to be interest divided by what? Well, oh, don't forget my parentheses. Divided by principal times time. 
and for the first case here it's just dragging it down it's right based on the years but then of course it changes it's going to be interest divided by parentheses principal times oops, the amount of months divided by 12 and you know at any point in these videos just pause when you see an equation and then you can write it down then we take it drag it down and repeat equals in this case 400 is our interest divided by parentheses principal times I'll put another parenthesis here 1460 divided by 365 and then if you want to get the formula pause the video there it is hit enter and drag it down so I mean this is repetitive but I want you to realize how the formula works you're trying to really retain it in this case we solve a rate in, when we have time in years and then months and then days and just like the other cases we need three formulas and finally we finish up with time now in this video right here I mean I'm going to delete these here in this video right here you see the answers and you've been seeing them all along I try to black out what I don't want you to figure I want you to figure out the first time in years then time in months and finally time in days so here we're going to do time and time is equal to interest divided by principal parentheses times rate there's the formula if you want to pause the video and get it hit enter we should get four then we repeat the process here equals principal divided by so interest excuse me divided by principal times rate well wait a minute this is going to give us let's see what this gives us here it gives us four again but it's really months right so you want to take that value and then multiply it by 12. So that's our formula. If you want to grab that, pause the video. Okay, we get 48. Drag it down. And then finally, we go over here to days. This is going to be interest divided by principal times rate. And then we're going to multiply that by what? Well, 365. So if you want to pause the video and grab your last formula, there it is. And we're finished. Now, in, in each of these tabs, we're, we're just the same thing over and over again, really just switching the variable that's missing. We're always first solving for years, then for months, and then finally for days. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do it all at once? Wouldn't that be nice? Especially if you had lots of these things. This is only 16 values. What if you had thousands of them? They're all mixed in years and months and days. You don't want to keep sorting. Like, imagine you get new entries in your account each month or whatever, each week, however this is dated. You don't want to keep sorting and doing this over and over again. So there's lots of ways to deal with this. Now, on Canvas, the formula is right there, right? And I'm going to talk about if formulas in class a little bit and is blank formulas but basically I just did it for interest and the really cool thing is that you write one formula and what the spreadsheet will do is it'll look it'll say okay is this cell blank if it's not blank and there's an entry in years in other words then to find the interest you do principal times rate times the years directly so it actually looks at that and see it says is it blank if if it is blank if there's no year entry but it's over here as you can see down here, the first cell is blank. It moves on to the next one and says, oh, if this is not blank, then, in this case, it's not blank, you're going to do, to find the interest, you're going to do principal times rate times whatever is here divided by 12. And if this is blank, you move on to the next one. Now, that's the only other case. If this is, if the first, there's only, there's only years, months, and days, but you could have more entries here. There's no limit to it. In the last case, when you're dealing with days, to find interest, you just do principal times rate times whatever is here divided by 365. So how does the formula do that? How does it look at a cell and determine if it's blank and then move on if it is blank and stay if it isn't blank? How does it do that? Well, this is the formula right here. There's a lot going on in this formula, and it's overwhelming at first. Now, you could just copy and paste it, but you're missing out on an opportunity here to understand what's going on. We first start with an if formula. Now, what an if formula does is it calls to a cell and tests a condition. And this is the condition it's testing. It says, if D2 is blank, and that's, if, if D2 is not blank, that's why it says is blank, false. Is blank D2 equals false? Let me just show you how that formula works real quick. So, is blank 
that will test whether a cell is empty or not. So if I say D4, the D2, excuse me, it is false. In other words, it's not blank. If I delete the 4, it's true. It tests whether the cell is blank or not. So if it is blank, it'll produce true. If it's not blank, it'll produce false. So in this formula, I took advantage of that and said, all right, if D2, if I, if I look at D2 with the is blank command, it produces false, which says, well, it's not blank, then that, must, that means there's an entry in this column in years, and you just do B2 times C2 times D2. So an if formula looks at a condition, in this case, it's looking at D2 to see if it's blank, and since it's, if, if, if it is not blank, excuse me, and if it's not blank, it'll just multiply, principal times rate times time in years. But if it is blank, that's the next thing, it repeats the process. It looks at E2, and it's trying to figure out if E2 is not blank, then there's an entry there, and you would do B2 times C2 times E2 divided by 12. In other words, it divides the amount of months by 12. And if that is, if that is blank, it moves on to the last case and says if the last one is blank, is not blank, then do B2 times C2 times F2 times divided by 365. And I didn't make a condition if these things are false because in that case, it's going to do nothing. The default is to do nothing. So for example, watch this. So let's say I make sure it's delete. See, so it just says false. In other words, there's nothing there to calculate. So this formula, if I confused you, because I was, <laughs> I realize now that the is blank command being false kind of switched my words up a little bit. Let me just say one more time what this formula does, okay? So with this time, hopefully without messing it up or confusing you. In this cell, it starts off with an if command. It says, all right, if D2 is not blank, then multiply B2, C2, and D2. In other words, if... This cell right here is not blank, and it's not. Just multiply your principal by rate and time directly. That's if it's not blank. But if it is blank, then move on. It goes to the next condition, and it repeats the process. It says if E2 is not blank, that's the cell in months, then do B2 principal times C2 rate times time in months and divide that by 12. But if it's not if it is blank, I almost, I almost tripped it up there. If, it's, if it is blank, then move on. Look at the last cell and see if, if that's not blank. If, in other words, if there's an entry there, that would be an entry in days. And in that case, do this. Principal times rate times time divided by 365. And this one formula, once you paste it, you can drag it down. It'll calculate all of them. And I want you to realize this, this if formula, these conditional formulas are super useful. All right. Hope this helps.